Are you looking to invest like the professionals without the buyer's agent price tag? Diva helps you save time and money by filtering out 99% of markets within Australia to give you the top 1% of Australia's suburbs set for strong returns. The do-it-yourself buyer's agency save you thousands on buyer's agent fees and months on courses. Instead, for a fraction of the price, you can search the highest performing markets, target the right property for your investment goals and be guided through the purchase process. Diva, the ultimate tool for the everyday investor. Sign up at www.diva.com.au to put the power back in your hands. That's www.diyba.com.au. This is a Momentum Media production. Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show, the podcast by investors for investors. Hi, good everyone. How are you going? It's Phil Tarrant here. I'm the host of the Smart Property Investment Show, smartpropertyinvestment.com.au, social media, Smart Property HQ is where you'll find us. And please, everyone, keep those reviews coming. Um, podcasts off the charts, getting a quarter of a million downloads every month, which is quite good to see and refreshing. It just sort of reminds me the um, the breadth or just how wide the listenership is to this podcast and how people are using it for making investment decisions. So, I try and get it right most of the time. I'm not perfect, but uh, as an investor myself, as you all know, uh, I'll work it out along the way and hopefully you can join me on that journey as we continue to create wealth through property, which is very much what this is all about. Why do I invest in property? Well, a lot of people in inverted commas love property. I like to make money out of property and that's the the basis of my strategy is to how can I invest in property today to have a, more choices uh, in the future. And um, as you know, and you've been tuning in lately, I've been sort of shuffling the decks on the portfolio recently, um, uh, selling down some stuff, buying some new stuff, and that will continue over time, uh, trading in a different type of assets after what has been a very good foundational portfolio that sort of capped out about 18, 19 properties inside the Smart Property Investment portfolio. We're selling that down, all parts of it down, and, and reinvesting it elsewhere. So more stories that come around that, but I had a very good discussion with Steve Waters from the Right Property Group, who was the buyer's agent that helped us establish that a portfolio back in the day and um, go and tune into that if you want to know what's happening. One area where I do invest, um, but I have commercial property, but I don't have resi property is in Western Australia and Perth. Uh, I've been looking at it. I've had my buyer's agent considering it for me and I may make a play in there in time, but I've been watching that market for some time now. Um, I remember being in Perth about five years ago at a, I was presenting at a conference for mortgage brokers and I interviewed three real estate agents on stage and uh, let's just say their their heads were low and they were, their shoulders were slumped. It wasn't the, the best of time to be selling in, uh, property in real estate in Perth in particular, especially when the prices they were selling property were lower than what it was 10 years prior. So it is a market that's gone through some significant cycles. It's it's feast and famine normally in Western Australia, particularly Perth. And uh, from what I understand, it's having a bit of a bull run at the moment. So I want to have a bit of a spotlight on Perth today from the acquisition point of view, but also from a property management point of view. And I've brought in a local expert, uh, Ashby Farrell. He's from a organization called White Arch. It's a sales and also a property management business. He's the director there. I'm going to pick his brain to see what's going on in Western Australia. Ashby, how are you going? You well? I'm well. Thank you for having me. Mate, it's good to see you. Why White Arch? There's got to be a backstory with that. Uh, it's, my partner's always saying that I need to come up with something a little bit more glamorous for my story because it is not that uh, that glamorous. Writing on a piece of paper what colours I love, shapes, things like that, and just putting them together. My favourite architectural feature in a property is an archway, and my favourite colour, or well, it's not really a colour, is white. Put them together and you've got two of my favourite things in a home, which is a white arch. So that's how we came to it. Mate, I like it. It's, I quite like the logo as well. It's very sort of clean and um, uh, no doubt we'll see it splash around on top of buildings one day. And I think that's probably the pathway that you're going in. So why do you work in real estate? How'd you end up finding yourself in real estate? It's a funny story. So I, I grew up playing a lot of sport. I was quite good at tennis. I traveled around the world playing tennis. So I was semi-professional and did all of that and I came back home and decided, said to mum, don't want to play tennis anymore. It's a grind. You know, It's not fun. All of this. She said, well, you've got to go get a job. Okay, so I went and started coaching tennis. And as you do, you climb up the ranks. And all of a sudden, I was in a pretty senior position in Perth, coaching tennis, one of the biggest academies here. 
And I realized, hang on, this is not what I want to do. I just was doing this for a bit of money because mum was going to keep me out of the house. Yeah. And uh, so I sat down and I said, well, what do I like to do? And I'm Denard and I had a friend who their parents uh, were in real estate, quite you know prominent agents in Applecross in, in one of the premier suburbs in Perth. And when I sat down, I said, oh, what's involved in real estate? It gave me a bit of a rundown. And I thought, oh, that sounds like something I'd, I'd like to do. I like to talk to people and I, like, I love homes. I was on real estate website, real estate.com every night. So I thought, all right, let's go do the course and find a job. So I just went down to the local um, professionals in Mount Lawley and I said, can I have a job? I've done the course. And they said, yeah, okay. And that's how it started. So what was your first day in real estate like? Uh, I was late. I remember that. <laughs> um, so I, we had uh, my first day in real estate. They said, don't come in on the Monday, come in on the Tuesday. We have our sales meeting. That can be your first day and you can meet everyone. It's a perfect opportunity. So, okay. And of course I lost, I lost my keys that morning and you know, I'm freaking out, can't find my keys anywhere. And, uh, by the time I decide to get a taxi, I'm already late. So then I get a taxi and I'm getting there 30 minutes late. There really wasn't much to it. 10 years ago though, every office is different, essentially. In that office, it was sink or swim. So they, I met everyone. They gave me my little cubicle. They said, here's 5,000 drop cards and um, we'll check in with you once a week. And that was kind of it. Wow. So what did you remember making your first phone call? I do. It wasn't too bad. I, I, I don't mind. I mean, I don't cold call now, as you say, but I don't mind the calls or speaking with people uh, or the rejection, as people say. I, I don't know if that's from playing tennis, being an individual sport. I'm not sure. So it wasn't too bad, but that first day on the phone, there was a lot of uh, bugger off your real estate agent. And I thought, this can't be the way that everyone's everyone's doing it, but that's that's what everyone was doing. Yeah. I think um, a lot of people are attracted to real estate. And I think, I might get this number wrong, but like one in eight working Australians have something to do with real estate. That could be construction and all this sort of stuff, right? So- it's a popular pathway for a lot of people. And I think a lot of people find themselves in real estate because they don't really want to be doing what they're doing. And it sounds like you've had that story with tennis and tennis coaching. Do you still play tennis today? Do you ever pick up a racket and have a hit? Uh, I was still playing state league until about a year or two years ago. My knee went kaput yeah. and that was the end, you know. So so I've decided done done with tennis lifestyle. Have you played pickleball yet? No. Uh, Would we consider that a real sport? I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's a <laughs> It's the fastest growing it's sport. The fastest, fastest yeah, growing I know. sport in North America. I know. You know. People love it, and there's a couple of clubs doing it here in Perth, but I don't think it's for me. I think I've got that tennis snobbery about me. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, well, we we, we uh, all our kids play tennis, so I like tennis. It's a good family sport, but uh, fantastic. Anyway, we're very recreational, no doubt. Uh, yeah. Not nowhere near what you're doing. So, so real estate, you're at it for a decade, and then what you went? I want to create my own shop. Is that what happened? Yeah. So I had a few different shops that I was at during that period. That first one I got fired from, as you can imagine, I wasn't, I showed up late on the first day and, and, uh, I was finding it hard to get sales. Did they pay you a salary or they just went commission only? I was, on, I was debit credit. Okay. So they did pay me a salary. Essentially, once I got my first sale, they were like, yeah, okay, that'll pay, pay back what we paid you. And, uh, off you go. I don't think it's going to work out. So I, then I had a few different shops that I worked for over the years. And yeah, about two years ago, I just thought, okay, you know, where do I want to be in my career and long-term and goals and family and all of that? Um, and it just felt like the right time to to go do it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, going out alone is quite daunting, but it can also be quite satisfying because you're the victim of your own, uh, well, you're, you're the captain of your own ship, right? You know, if, what, what you do, if you start getting lazy, you don't do what you need to do, what happens? That money doesn't come to do all. What was the first property you sold? How long did it take from when you when they said, here's your cubicle, to making your first sale when you kicked off? And- uh, probably did my first sale probably three months in. Okay. Probably three bad. months in and you know, a couple of months for settlement. That was, I remember it very clearly because it, it actually plays into kind of what we were talking, we're going to talk about later today with the Perth market. So I started 2014, February 2014. 2014, most real estate agents, if they've been in the game for as long as I have or longer, will agree 2014 was the last decent year. Now it wasn't a good year, but it was a decent year before this craziness we're having right now. Um, my first sale was an apartment at 227 Vincent Street and that's in Leadable, which is right next to the city. Leadable's, you know, one and a half, two Ks from the CBD. So it's a pretty, pretty good spot. It does have a lot of, you know, apartments and villas and townhouses. So it's not big homes near the city. Anyways, that was for $288,000. It's in a flat, it was in the block of flats. They're about I think they're 36, no, they're 40 square meters. 
40 okay. square meters. All of them are identical. And um, $288,000, that was the last sale of that price in a decade. They've never recovered. That was the highest sale. I did the last one and it's just, it just went down for eight years since then. And then the last couple of years, it's coming back to us. That was my first sale. And I remember being, oh, this is fantastic. And I had been watching some of the real estate shows and I was trying to negotiate like they were on the TV. I thought it was amazing. It was great. It was really great fun. Yeah, it is. And are those prices back to where they were at that point? So in those particular buildings, no. Right. So I reckon in that building, you could pick up one for an unrenovated one for around 200 at the moment. Someone's done a bit of work. You might be paying 250. I just saw one around the corner, different type of complex, but 279. So I don't think they're back to that price point yet. A lot of people in Perth for a really long time were losing money on their investment properties or their properties that they were living in. And there's a lot of fear, especially in that type of property. I think unfounded fear because they're great investments, really. Yeah, and hence the reason why the whole of Australia feels like it's flocking to Perth at the moment. Uh, real estate's yeah. moving fast. I know every buyer's agent, every buyer's agent in the land is uh, out in Perth looking for stock. But t- to that point, you know, um, did you sell to a property investor or own occupy that particular? I was to a property investor, local. Property investor. Local. He actually had another one in the building. I think he had the one next door. In the end, yeah. that came out, and then he, you know, he had a few other properties around the the area. Yep. So that person bought that property and had to sit on it for a decade and it's still not back to the price they paid for it. Like, yeah. And- You know, that's got to hurt, right? Yeah, it does. And, and the other thing that in that period of time is our rental prices were going down at that period as well. So, yeah. you know, we weren't having a strong rental market and a, but a weak sales market. Both marketplaces were going down. So investors that had bought or people who had bought and then wanted to turn their property into an investment- uh, both markets going the wrong way for them. It was really hard for them to get out of the marketplace because if they sold it, they were maybe some people looking at negative equity or losing money, um, having to give the bank money. And um, if they kept holding on to it, you know, they were like, well, what if it never stops? We're still paying $100 or $200 or $300 a week to carry this property because the rentals aren't paying for it. When will it stop? So that was that happened for a, a long time. Yeah, God, you know, and I think about those property investors who are sitting there thinking, well, this is bouncing back now. But, you know, for property investors, Perth hasn't really been an attractive proposition for some time. Now it's, you know, I remember speaking to some people out in Perth a couple of years ago and, and other buyers agent pretty much going, well, things are happening. It's, you're going to see some shifts and some changes. And, and that has taken place right now. We'll have a chat about the Perth market. But before we do that, I speak, what do you like about running your own business the most? I suppose I like the autonomy. I suppose if you're in real estate, you like autonomy anyways. But when I worked for someone else, as much as you're a commission-only agent, you know, you know, the money that you earn or the business that you do is really off your own back, you still have that sense of at the back that you're working for someone else and you need to play by their rules and, you know, not to disappoint them. You know, if you, you know, want to go away or something, you still um and are about these types of things because um, you're still an employee. So I, I really like just being able to, you know, choose the pace that I want to go at, make sure that all my clients get the service that I want them to get. That's from admin through to myself. And then, you know, my partner, she runs her own business. And so she was a big advocate for me to do it. And, you know, so as a, for our family, our little family that we're growing, it's quite enjoyable to share our business successes together. You know, both of us, she's in her lane, I'm in my lane, but we get to come together and kind of share the enjoyment of growing our businesses in tandem, if that makes you sense. You work in the same little office, you sort of sit there and- No, she technically has her name on my door, but she, funny story with her business, she she had the big fancy office six, seven years ago, really, you know, really nice one. And um, she hated going to it. Yeah. So we recently built a new house and we just built a fully decked out home office for her. And um, if she meets clients, she goes off and meets them at either their offices or out and about. Um, and her staff can come to her because it's, you know, big enough space. So, yeah, it's good. And housing has changed so much now as a re- result of that. You know, people now build yeah. offices connected to their homes, like offices, offices. It's um, it's it's an attractive proposition. It's what a lot of people are looking for when they're trading real estate. No doubt the same applies uh, in Perth as, as what it does on the uh, the East Coast over here. But um, as we're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, we'll chat about what's going on in Perth. Uh, stay with us, everyone. Back in a moment. Crush the burden of rising mortgage repayments. 
we understand that managing your finances can be overwhelming, especially as interest rates continue to rise. With access to 70 plus lenders, our team of specialised brokers will find the best rates for your specific needs. Count on us to secure a lower rate swiftly, giving you the confidence you deserve. Book an appointment with one of our experts today to protect your financial well-being and secure your future. Call us now at 02 or visit our website at finney.com.au. Uh, welcome back. It's Phil Tarrant, host of the Smart Pro Investment Show, having a chat with Aspie Farrell. He's from uh, Wynos. What's your email address, Aspie? We want to track you down. Ashby, so it's A-S-H-B-Y at whitearch.com.au. So just how it sounds. Yep. All right. And because um, you do sales, but also property management, which is yes. primarily want to have a chat about. But um, what are you seeing in the Perth market at the moment? I, I sort of reference, you know, conversations I was having a couple of years ago. People were saying, okay, now it's time. I think there's going to be a, a reversal of market conditions. And, and I know many people who have bought property out in Western Australia. We did the big uh, Smart Property Investment Fast 50 report earlier this year and the Perth market particularly, but some of the surrounding suburbs, north and south of it, or a lot of them rated very well in terms of where to put your money today for the best capital growth over the coming period of time. So stuff's happening in Perth and Western Australia. What what are you seeing, mate? You're seeing high levels of activity and and, and capital growth? Really, really high levels of activity at the moment. We had just like the whole of Australia, we had that stagnant period during all the rate rise news cycles, you know, but Perth performed pretty decently over that period. You know, we didn't see massive amounts of growth, but we saw nice stable marketplace. But the main main issue that we were facing is stock levels have just been dropping and dropping and dropping week on week for four months now. So in terms of capital growth, we're seeing it a lot of people they're starting to snap up those properties in the the band of the suburbs that's probably 5 to 10 k's from the city right so it's still really convenient to get to perth and they're all subdividable and i'm seeing that people are buying those in preparation to subdivide them for the years ahead because they are seeing that the stock is just not there and that there's going to be need need for a supply at some point and so that is I sold about four or five over the last few months in a, an area called Morley, which have big, big blocks somewhere between seven and 900 squares, and they're all subdividable into two or three lots. And they were just selling like hotcakes. And every agent in that area said that they're just anyone that wants to do a subdivision is out there and they just try to pick it up, you know. And that property investors are snapping this stuff up? Yeah, property investors. So I'm, uh, three people bought East, actually two Eastern States buyers bought these types of properties from me and they just having the tenant in there at the moment because they're getting great rental return and they're preparing for maybe a year when the building prices come down to do a subdivision, chop off the back, build another little property and they'll everyone will be different. Some people will sell it and some people will keep it, hold on to it as an investment. Yeah. Yeah. And they're genuine subdividable. They're not like uh, granny flats. They're, they're, no, sp- they're proper, off. like you're still going to end up with a proper 350 to 400 square meter home. You know, yeah. this is what we're talking about. And over on the East Coast, it's probably unheard of to get 700 squares within um, – uh, it's a 10-minute drive to the city. Right? It's like really What sort of price are they going for? Somewhere between, you know, on the low end, high fives, and that's probably doesn't exist anymore. That's probably three months ago. Probably now you have to pay low sixes. No. And on the high end, you're probably up to low sevens. Anything that's too well done, you know, something that's been renovated, then they're going to own occupiers. Yeah. You know, maybe, you know, an investor's not going to, the numbers don't stack up, but anything that's sub 700, the numbers really stack up and they go, okay, let's have a crack. Yeah. And sort of, you can split it. Can you do um, townhouse developments, like three or four on those blocks? The zoning, will, it'll be dependent on the zoning. So those ones I was selling were twos or threes. The ones that are closer to the main roads or on the main roads, you certainly can. Uh, it's also building to your demographic. Here in Perth, we love a house with some land. So if you can do, you know, lots of three where someone's still getting, you know, three by two with like a little yard, it's probably actually going to do better than selling four smaller townhouses. Yeah. And the local council, are they pretty uh, open and amenable to development? Because I know out on the East Coast, like trying to get stuff through councils, like pulling teeth. Uh, which council is Morley in? Is that? Basewater. Basewater. The Basewater, Basewater Council. Yeah, they, Basewater they, 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 yeah. yeah, they're pretty good. 
they know that there's not enough property where they are. They know that they need to probably bring their block sizes down a bit, bring their density up a bit because it is so convenient to the city and they're still, they're one of the last suburbs that close that are practically every block there is seven or 800 squares. So there's a lot of subdivision that can be done through that area still um, and a lot of development that can be done through the area still. This, this is the infill. Has it got the- um- Yes. The infrastructure and has it got the amenities there? It's got like pools and- yeah. That's well. why people love Morley. It's got great family facilities. It's got the train line, you know, so getting into the city is very easy. It's got great bus services um, and the schools. They, you know, they, they love the schools. Mm. And are the sort of local sort of NIMBY type people, not in my backyard, or they're, they're, they're quite happy with, well, they're probably all getting uplifts in the value of their properties, but everyone's happy with the changing nature of the suburb. I think so. I think so. I mean, as you said, they're all getting an uplift in the value of their homes. Mm-hmm. And um, Morley was hit pretty hard. Well, all of Perth was hit pretty hard. So a lot of people are uh, just relieved that they're finally getting some value out of the investment that they might have made 10 years ago. Yeah. And who's who's selling it? Is it owner occupiers or are they investors selling sort of assets that they've finally got a little bit of growth on? Yeah. I'd say it's owner occupiers. Owner occupiers are selling. Pretty much. Yeah, I, I, I can't put a number on it, but it, a majority of that stock is going to be people that have been there for a really long time, yeah. like a really long time. We're talking the ones that I was selling personally, every single owner of those properties had owned them for more than 40 years. Okay. So, so they're sort of downsizing, are they? Uh, and and how do they normally configure? Is normally a house on the front of the block and a big backyard? Yeah. So if you're lucky, you'll have the house in the front of the block. So Morley, Morley was typical- you'd have a really front yard, a really big front yard and a good size backyard. So your house is kind of in the center. Yeah. Whereas an area like Yokine, which is just up from Morley, a lot of the houses, which is, Yokine's a fantastic spot to invest in because all the houses are at the front of the block. And so you can buy that rundown home, renovate that front and subdivide, sell the lot or build something in the back. I've had a few clients do that. So if you're looking for something where you maybe don't have to bulldoze or build a around as much, Yokine's a great spot as well, which is just up the road from Walling. Where about it? What's the suburb? It's called Yokine. 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 Yo- yeah, yeah, and it's on the fringe of a few premier suburbs like Corbinia, Menorah, Mount Lawley, North Perth. So we saw a lot of growth in Yokine over the last three years. Yeah, I might have a look at Yokine. But these are the subtleties you need to look at as a, an investor if you're looking to, I guess, land bank with you to – something with upside potential for a uh, a development or a, a splitting it in the future, you've got to look at where these these properties are situated. Um, is all the width of the blocks are all, yeah, they they, they all suit council. Uh, is yeah. there anything smaller than what council sort of requires for splitting or are they all- Typically all- not. They're all pretty good. You'd be able to lucky if you found one that wasn't the right width, but they're all, they're all where they need to be. Once you get closer to the city- you're going to have more difficulty. But once you get close to the city, you're going to be building a different type of property anyways. Yeah. yeah. You're probably going to get a heap of calls from property investors tuning into this saying, oh, give me one of these uh, blocks in Morley or Yokine because, um, you know, it's, investors are chasing that sort of stuff, you know. Yes. You, you got the yields today. What, what, what sort of rent are you getting on these properties? Yeah, so um, a good example, I've got one one of those ones sold. They, they kept it in the business for rental and I think they're getting 600 a week. Okay. Right. So, you know, it's probably not quite paying for itself, uh, but it's got so much upside potential in the in the long run. Yeah. You know, they're willing to bet on that. And, you know, that home, if you really think about that 600 a week now, that's probably it was probably less than 400 two years ago a week. So and, much- and that growth will continue. What sort of growth do you think annualized they're getting on these things, like 10% plus? Yeah, I think so. Because in Perth, what I'm seeing when I'm selling, the reality is owners – are buying other people's investment property. So our investment stock is getting lower and lower and lower, and there's nothing being built. Uh, there's nothing being built. There's a lot of migration coming to Perth. There's a lot of jobs uh, here in Perth, and we just simply don't have the stock. And I think what people need to remember is Perth's marketplace right now, the prices that we're paying for rental and for sales are probably just where they should have been. We've actually just corrected yeah. So we we were we had dropped so far off, and there was so little confidence in our marketplace that we actually had to get back to what where Perth should be. And so there's still some growth to be had from this period onwards, because in my mind we're just back 2014. I know a couple of times I'm going to go. Geez, I should have bought more in Perth when I when I uh, could have and should have. But um, you get many calls from buyers agents trying to sort of 
get access to your stock? Yes. So when I started in real estate, well, let's go back five years ago, so midway through my current career, and um, I would speak to a buyer's agent, I reckon once a quarter at best, I will wake up every morning with an email from a buyer's agent now with you know a list of their requirements for five or six different clients. I'll get a, two or three calls a week from a buyer's agent. They didn't really exist in Perth, but obviously over east, they're quite big. And those buyer's agents are making the calls and they're setting up shop over here as well. So we've yeah. now got buyer's agencies in Perth. Now, it's not a lot of them, but you know it's more than we had even four or five years ago. From what I understand, a lot of East Coast buyer's agents are, are traveling a lot to Perth uh, and actually putting sort of boots on the ground there with with locals to try and support yep. because um, it's pretty hot out there uh, at the moment. And how long this run will continue, I don't know. You know, with Perth, you need to be conscious that it is sort of it is a bit feast feast or famine. You know, uh, a decade or so ago, it was hot and prices were, you know, comparable in some ways with some some city based suburbs. And that's out of kilter. It shouldn't really be that way. And then you look at ten years of negative or flat markets. Um, so you need to be conscious if you are getting into Perth. You got to time it right because. You don't want to be buying at the top of the cycle, I would say. And and how long the next sort of flat period in Perth is going to be, I'm not too sure. But you got to focus on those fundamentals, looking for assets like Aspie's talking about, which have upside potential so you can manufacture equity uh, even yeah. if markets are slower. But it sounds as though the local councils are open for development, expanding it. Per- person attractive proposition, we need to house all those FIFO workers when they're not in the mines uh, in locations, and that's where they like to park their families. So, you know, it's very much... It's still a mining town, Perth. Um, it's all connected with, with the minerals and the, the extraction of minerals and, and shipping those minerals elsewhere. Uh, it's a very isolated place as, as well. But is that where you grew up? Aspie is Perth. Yeah, I grew up in Perth. So I'm from. I grew up in an area called City Beach. And moved to Wembley Downs a bit later. Obviously, City Beach is near the beach. Yeah. So I grew up. Some people would say it's the western suburbs of Perth. I grew up there, and then now I live in the eastern suburbs. I live in an area called. Mount Lawley. So I've lived here my whole life. I moved away for a bit for tennis, but Perth is home yet. Yeah. Where, where's the best place to play tennis? So I play, I trained at a place um, called Voluntaries. So essentially I trained with people like Marie Sharapova and, and um, you know, Tommy Haas and things like that. It came oh, to was where my was room. Where, where else was that? That's in Florida. In That's Florida. Florida. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big okay. tennis academy. Yeah. 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 I'm a tennis. So yeah, that was kind of my childhood, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. Well, must have been a pretty good tennis player. Now, let's talk about management, property management out in Perth, but we'll just go on another break. Uh, stay with us. Back in a moment. Well, welcome back, Phil Tarrant from Smart Property Investment. Having a chat with Aspie Farrell from Y Arch. Now, Aspie, so you've got a sales part of your business, but a big focus of you is the property management side of things. So, looking after the properties of property investors. Are, are a lot of them Perth based, or are you doing a lot of stuff for? East Coast based investors looking It's probably ninety percent Perth and then the you know the rest would be made up of East Coast or a couple of people overseas. We are seeing way more East Coasters come over. So a lot of the time when I am selling stuff from the rent roll, for instance, and it's an investment property, um, it ends up being an East Coaster that buys it. But yeah, most of the it's mostly, you know, local people with one or two properties. And then your rent rolls uh growing from what I understand. It's different in Perth and what is in the East Coast. What, what sort of standard fees on, on property management out your way? Yeah. So I'm not sure about East Coast in terms of how they charge, if they charge for inspections and things like that. Some agencies here will charge a flat fee, maybe 10, 11 or 12% if it's inclusive of everything. And some agencies will charge somewhere between you know, 8 and 10, but then they'll have the add-ons like inspection fees, uh, property condition reports, final bond reports. They add those on throughout the year as they're done. Yeah. And automatically, it ends up very similar. About the same. And a lot of East Coast investors sometimes sort of sit there thinking, well, it, it seems a lot more in uh, the property yeah. management in Perth than what it is uh, on the East Coast. And that's just the nature of the beast. It's always been that way and probably will always be that way in Perth. But you just need to price that into your cash flow forecasting. But um, from what I understand, you use a platform called Manage App to uh, manage properties. Um, and a lot of people don't know about this, and this is a really, really cool product. It's so good, I actually invested in it, but and now I use it myself for my own investments. But landlords get paid immediately when rent is paid rather than that money going into, into a trust account. When you look at the way 
interest rates have climbed over the last period of time and the fact that every cent matters. And, and I think about, I want money in my offsets as quickly as possible because I'm saving money on it. Manage app is a, is a great enabler for that. So it's essentially instant rent payment rather than having to wait with it sitting in a, a property manager's trust account for, for sometimes 30 days. Are you finding that's resonating with a lot of investors, Aspie? Yeah, they love it. It's exactly what you said. The sooner you can get the money into your account, the more money you're going to save with the rates and 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 just even from a cash flow point of view. My my investment properties, my personal ones, they're in the system as well because I love getting that rent every two weeks instantly. We can actually set up for weekly as well, you know, if, you, if your tenant's paying weekly. But most of the tenancies here in WA, people pay fortnightly. So every two weeks, you've got that money coming in. It's just really helping with the cash flow. Another thing that owners love in the platform is the fact that they can have their full amount of rent come in every two weeks or month. But then they can set up a different way to pay their bills. So they get the two, let's say it's $2,000 that comes in. And if there's a bill, we'll actually direct debit it from their account, the $300 bill. So they know every month, they know exactly what they're getting. It's a lot easier for them to forecast what they're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. And you find it easy as a property manager to use the platform? Yeah. I The main reason I, I got the platform is I thought it was going to give us more scope to do more work and to service our clients better. I've used the other ones in past at other agencies and they're good to have their place. But I didn't think that if you really wanted to build a big business that serves your clients to, you know, to that same level, I needed something that would give us that scope. And I think managed does that. Well, that's good feedback. And, uh, you know, as, as an investor in a business, obviously yeah, that's that's pretty cool. But, you know, landlords love managed. Um, and whenever I speak to landlords and I say, why would you want your rent funds sitting in a trust account that you can't access for a period of time when it can come directly into your bank account, into your um, offset account, offsetting interest. Um, so you're making money on the way through. So uh, it's a huge enabler. And I know it's a platform that, that continues to grow and evolve. So um, I'm happy to give it a plug and I will do um, manageapp.com.au. Go and check it out. Well, how big do you think your your property management business will get, Ashby? Do you think it will dwarf the size of, of your sales function moving forward? Is that the goal, the ambition for you? You just want more more investors uh, choosing uh, White Archers as their property manager out in Perth? So part of the way, part of the reason I stepped away from just doing sales and opening my own business through property management is because I'm probably an investor myself. And, you know, that's going to be a big part of what I do on ongoing. Um, and I want to provide property management directly from a property investor. Um, you know, so my client's dealing directly with me. I enjoy it probably more than the sales side. So I would like to see it overtake my sales and, you know, bring down the, the amount of sales that I have to do every year. But only time will tell as to how long and uh, how quickly we get to to where that needs to be. Well, what is it about property management you like so much? Because I know a lot of property managers and sometimes it can be like when you've got investors talking at a time, what about this? What about that? I don't want to pay for that, this that, and the other. Do you actually enjoy the cut and thrust of it all? Yeah. So, you know, you've got the mundane, you know, Lisa dealing with the the ingoing, the outgoing, the routine. I mean, that's that's yeah, that stuff's not the most enjoyable. But what you're talking about when you're talking with the investors about what they need to do, I actually love that dialogue. Sometimes we have to give hard truths about the way we're doing things or money that they might need to spend or the way they should set up certain things. But that's actually an enjoyable thing for me. Um, and being able to share my experiences and educate my clients if they need it about ways to do things, um, I get a, a big kick out of it. Yeah, it's cool. And, and you want your property manager to really enjoy what they're doing. And, and I've got some great property managers out in the East Coast uh, who do that. How hard is it though is to change property managers? So if someone said, oh, yeah, look, you know, Ashby sounds all right. I want to use White Arch. Like what does it take to actually move your management from one, one, one property manager to another? Yeah, so it's not too difficult. It depends on the agreement you have in place. So in WA, we actually have fixed term exclusive management authorities. I don't think in the East Coast they have, I don't think they have end dates over there. So over here, they do have a start date and an end date. And then at the end date, they roll over. But at the end of the day, it's your property. And if you want to exit, you can exit any time. Now, depending on the agency, some agencies will charge you a fee to exit early. So that, you know, if you're exiting six months early, most agencies have a clause in their EMAs that say, we're going to charge you 50% of what our fees would have been for that six months, right? 
So, and some agencies will just go, well, if we haven't serviced you well enough to keep you off you go, and some agencies will 100% charge that fee. It's just dependent on who you're dealing with, I suppose. But at the end of the day, it's your property. If you want to leave, you can leave. Yeah, yeah, and that's good. And how do you know if your property manager is doing a good job, do you think, in WA? Uh, I think it's important that you read your reports that you do get quarterly, assuming they're going out quarterly. Some reports, not all reports are created equal, okay? I outsource my reports to a company that all they do is reports. So I found when we were sending property managers out, the reports didn't get done at a high enough level because the property managers were so worried about coming back to the office and putting out fires that, you know, they knew their email email inbox was going to be full of little fires that they'd put out, that they'd just go out and they'd just bang it out. So make sure you're reading your reports to see what maintenance needs to be done and to see that they're thorough. And then also make sure that you're contacting your property manager. They're going to send you that report and say, look, this is the maintenance that needs to be done, or this is what we recommend. Just make sure that you're actually following up with them to say, hey, I saw you put on the report, this, this, and this. Can we please action that? Because sometimes property managers won't follow up after they send you a report. And then lastly is every time your property needs to be re-leased or um, renegotiated with the current tenant, make sure you call and a good property manager will be calling you anyways and have a conversation about where the current marketplace is and how you should approach that negotiation, whether you need to raise the rent or lower the rent is it a good tenant? All of that. I know from experience that sometimes they would just send out, hey, it's up for renewal. Do you want to renew it for $500 a week? That's what you're currently getting. But you actually, the purpose of the property is an investment. And so you do need to have that conversation and say, well, can you tell me what other properties in the area have rented for recently and should we try and achieve a little bit more? That's really important. Well, it sounds, mate, it sounds like you know what you're talking about. And, uh, you got my business when I buy in, in Perth, mate. Um, yeah, you, you want property managers working for you as the investor. You need to remember, yeah, as an investor, you're paying the property manager. You want them working for you. And I sometimes feel as though, and I've had it before, where where I feel like the property manager is working for the for the tenant. You know, when I'm going, well, that's not market rent. Market rent is this, and I'll argue against it and find out every reason why to make their job simpler and easier for themselves. So, property manager is absolutely critical when, yeah. it, when it comes to really maximizing the cash flow that your uh, asset can generate. So um, if you're looking for a new property manager, mate, I'd, I'd give you a call. Thank um, you. What's the website? Uh, whitearch.com.au. So very easy. Easy. Whitearch, all one word, .com .au. Just on that point, Philip, that you were talking about negotiate, or sometimes it feels like property managers are, are working for the tenant. Um, I think if a property manager is trying to persuade you for, you know, because they're trying to get better rent for the tenant or whatever it might be. As long as the property manager can show you financially why you're going to be in the same position or better, um, that's what they should be doing. You know, As you said, sometimes they say, oh, you know, you're going to lose the tenant, all of that. If they can show you on a piece of paper mathematically why you should be keeping this tenant, then it's fine. But as you said, I think too many times they say that they don't want to go out there and relet the property or do the extra work. Sometimes it is better to give a bit of a discount to a tenant yeah. because mathematically it's cheaper because you go through the set of fees and I'll show you my fees. And if you send me out here to release it because you've lost this tenant, it's actually going to cost you an extra thousand dollars this year. But that's the conversation that needs to be had. It can't just be, oh, you shouldn't charge the tenant more money or, you know, you should charge them a hundred dollars more. It, it needs to actually be a thought out process as to why you're trying to get or achieve what you're trying to achieve, in my opinion. Yeah, so exactly, you're talking exactly as I expect a property manager or my property manager to operate with. Have you got capacity to take on more management, mate? Are you sort of- Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. 100%. So I want to take on another 20 right, uh, in the, as soon as possible. Okay. Um, as soon as that, I'm going to bring on a second administrator. So at the moment, I have one administrator. Um, as soon as I hit 20 more properties, I'll bring on a second administrator. The way I run my business is I've got all my backend support and then I'm client facing, right? So- all my clients and the tenants have a direct line to me whenever they need it. In property management in WA, there is a huge turnover of property managers. And it's yep. one of the largest gripes for owners that they don't know who their property manager is. They don't know who's managing it. They find out two, three months later that someone new has been doing it. And so I never want my clients to experience that. So for me, it's really important that the clients know that I'm always going to be involved with the support of my team. And if there is turnover in my business, it's not going to affect them because their direct line essentially will be to me. 
I guess also back, back, back to manage, if, if people choose you as a property manager, they're going to be able to use that platform and get their rent paid immediately. And they've got, yeah, exactly. And they've got, they've got 24 seven access to the platform. So you'll be able to see everything in there. You get your rent paid. You can pay your bills in there yourself if you want. And you can, you can go in and you can pay yourself your rent early if there's money sitting there and you weren't on an instant payment cycle, for instance. So it has all of that user friendly, um, uh, features, I suppose, uh, which landlords love. Well, yep. Landlords love managed. Um, anyway, that may, I, 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 I like people speaking good about it because I think it's a great place. Tenants love managed as well, FYI. Tenants love managed as well. Which but, is good. Uh, Happy tenants, good for you. Well, mate, let's check in. I want to see how many people call you up to say, hang on a sec, I, I don't think my property manager is doing it right for me in Perth at the moment. You can do all of Perth or any particular areas you like to concentrate in? I can do all of Perth. My core business is what I call the Northern City Fringe. So Perth 6000, Leadable, Mount Lawley, North Perth, Highgate. You know, but I've got properties all the way in Bicton, which is near yeah, Fremantle, and all the way up to Jindalup. So we do spread our wings, uh, but the bulk of my business is within 10 minutes of the city. Okay, there you go. Well, you've learned a lot about Perth today. Uh, in contact uh, Ashby uh, at whitearch.com.au. Have a chat with him and just pick his brains. You know, Even if you just want to see whether or not you're getting the right rent at the moment, uh, it's always good to get a second opinion. Uh, appreciate your time, Ashby. Just really enjoy chatting, mate. Thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity to come on here and, and chat with yourself. You're a big player in, in the real estate, Australian real estate world. I watch a lot of your podcasts, so it's, it's really a great opportunity and I really appreciate your time. Mate, I appreciate the feedback. It's pretty easy. If you want to come on for a, a podcast, it's pretty easy to have a chat with me, isn't it? Yes, I've yeah, had it. Yeah. Very easy. <laughs> nice one. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Aspie from um, He's the Director over at White Arch. Uh, go and check these guys out. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Um, I, I like talking about Perth. I do it every now and then. I reckon I should be doing more of it. Might have been sort of deploy my buyer's agent out there myself to get some stuff. Yonk, yonk. Yo-kan. 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 Don't worry. I'm going to send you an email. Soon All, right. As we All right. Good. <laughs> Thanks for, for tuning in, everyone. Remember to check out smartpropertyinvestment.com. They use uh, social media, Smart Property HQ is where you'll find us. Please keep those reviews coming. We do like them. We do enjoy them. And the team get a real kick out of it. I get to do the good bit, talk to people. But uh, there's a big team here who – do all the heavy lifting on this podcast so they get a real kick out of those uh, reviews. So please keep them coming. No doubt Aspie's going to leave a review himself and have a look. We'll see you again next time. Until then, bye-bye. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned.